In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make some pretty cool looking water bases using a two-part epoxy resin. And show you that working with resin is actually a lot easier than people think. So the very first thing we're gonna do to start these bases off is break up a few pieces of cork board and stack them up to make our platform for the miniatures to stand on. You can just do one single layer or you can do two. I prefer to go with two here because we're gonna add some shells in later and I want the water to fully cover those. You can do three on some of the bigger bases, but if you're doing 25s or 32s, two's probably enough. After that, we're gonna grab a can of our secret sauce, the Vallejo Dark Earth. This stuff is awesome. I bought this can about maybe a year or two ago and it's still going strong. Ever since I got this, I never had to do the sand and PVA glue method. You can do that here. There's nothing wrong with sticking to the classic method, but this saves me some time and energy, so this is what I recommend. And they actually make a sand colored version of this, but I have the Dark Earth here on me, so we're just gonna go ahead and use that. And it normally takes a while to dry, but for the sake of making the video a little quicker, I'm just gonna speed up the process with a hairdryer. Now we're gonna go ahead and paint the rocks and we're gonna do that classic dark rock look. So I'm taking Vallejo Neutral Gray and just gonna base coat the entirety of the cork board. If you don't have Vallejo Neutral Gray, that's no problem. You can just mix black and white paint. Just go ahead and make yourself a gray that leans on the darker edge of the spectrum. Now we're gonna do a quick dry brush with Stonewall Gray. This is probably my favorite dry brushing color for when I'm doing darker rocks like this. And again, if you don't have this, just go ahead and mix yourself up some gray in a, kind of a mid-tone because we're gonna use Sky Gray after this for the highlight. After that's done, grab your sky gray and just go all around the model again. And I like to feather it near the edges because it kind of gives it a more worn look. And the last part of our super easy rocks, we're gonna grab Nuln Oil and put it over the entire thing. You can do the Nuln Oil before the dry brushing, but the Nuln Oil or whatever kind of shade you decide to use is gonna bring all those colors together and make it look a lot more natural because they're tinting all the colors that are underneath. So I like to do the dry brushing first before I put it on. After that, I'm gonna grab some model color desert yellow and we're gonna paint the sand here. And if you don't have this color, I believe GW makes a couple of equivalents, Xandari dust or the Tamarian sand, I think that's what it's called. Uh, those would probably work as pretty good substitutes. We just want a nice dark sand color because we're gonna dry brush this. After we're happy with that, we're gonna dry brush it with model color Iraqi sand. And again, you can just be mixing white into these paints to bring it up to the exact hue that you want. You don't have to buy the exact color paint. I'm a big fan of mixing my own if I, if I don't have the actual color that I need. So after that, we're gonna grab a bag of these tiny craft shells. You can pick this up at Hobby Lobby, Michael's, any craft store should carry them. And look for the ones that have these colored shells in them. I personally like them a lot better. I think they show up in the resin a lot more than just the natural colored ones. And they help create the scene a little better. Also make sure to dry fit them before you put any glue down. It's nothing worse than putting a whole big glob of super glue down and then figuring out that your shell is hanging over the edge or just doesn't look right.
After that, we're gonna add some underwater plants. And I find that the lechen that you can get at hobby supply stores that you use for making bushes and stuff actually works really, really well for seaweed. I think green is a staple. You should definitely have some green, but then after that, get creative. If you've got purple, red, orange lechen, doesn't really matter. It's gonna basically look like coral after we put it down. And if you have a mix, why not grab a couple of different ones, see how it looks. And the very last step that we're gonna do here before we move on to the resin is just take some black and add a nice rim to our bases. If you want, you can extend the sand color all the way down, but I think a nice black trim looks classy, so that's what I'm doing here. So before we start pouring our resin, we're gonna need to make a dam on our bases. So I'm using some polystyrene sheets from Everscale Models. It doesn't have to be this brand. I think a lot of different people make it. And you want to get it really thin. I think these are 0 0.02 millimeters or 0.2 millimeters. And that's just gonna make it a lot easier to work with. The thicker the plastic, the harder it's gonna to be to conform to the circle shape that you want. So what you're gonna do is line it up and make sure you're cutting a sheet to be about as tall as the rock because we don't wanna cover the rock, so that will be plenty. And if you feel a little bit unsure, just go ahead and make it a little extra tall. We can always take a little bit extra off, but we can't add more to it. So once we have the plastic cut to shape, I'm gonna add a little bit of scotch tape to the end of it. And then I'm going to wrap it around the base and try to get it really nice and snug and then just secure it with the scotch tape at the very end of it. And don't worry if it's not perfectly seated, we're gonna use a lot of hot glue in the next step to make sure the dam doesn't leak. And then additionally, I add another piece of scotch tape and just wrap it around the two connecting points to make sure that there isn't a gap on the inside that the resin's gonna seep into. All right, after that's done, grab your hot glue gun, let it heat up, and we're going to flip these over and just go around the entirety of where the plastic is meeting the base and seal it up with hot glue. Resin takes a long time to dry. Honestly, it takes about 24 hours. And if it leaks at any point, and it's gonna be a slow leak, you probably won't notice it right away. Uh, and it's just gonna make a huge mess. And it's really, really difficult to fix after that. So I like to be safe and use a little more hot glue than I think I need and just kind of smear it all over the place. And don't make the same mistake that I did the first time I did this. I actually ended up using industrial strength hot glue. And uh, yeah, that was a real nightmare to get it off. But I've corrected that. I'm just using the regular stuff that you can get at any crafting store. And we're gonna make this dam and make sure it doesn't leak. It looks like a real mess, but it's gonna do its job. We're gonna move on now to mixing up our resin. And I know a lot of people who have never used resin before are really nervous about it, but they really like how it looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that it's not as complicated as, as it might first appear to be. We're just gonna go ahead and take equal parts of the two part, put them into separate containers. I'm using these little plastic shot glasses that you can get at Target or Walmart or wherever. They sell them pretty cheap, but they make great mixing utensils. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour equal parts into each one of these. And then I'm gonna kind of pour them back and forth between the two and just kind of make sure I have all of the mixture together. Then I'm going to scoop all of it into a single container and I'm gonna use a wooden coffee stirrer to mix them up. Now that's the part where it gets a little tricky. You wanna go super slow with this. If you go too quick, you're gonna be mixing a whole lot of air bubbles into it. And we don't want that because it's going to kind of make a mess and it's gonna leave 
you're gonna see a lot of the air bubbles in the finished product and it doesn't really look great. Some people like the effect cause it looks like you'd see, you know, air bubbles in a fish tank or something. But we do wanna try to minimize that. So I've sped it up here, but do try to go slow. Now when it comes to the dye, I actually use way too much dye here. A single drop would have been perfect. Um, but the ones I did before came out really clear. So I just wanted to go super overboard and, and see what it looked like. Now the dye I'm using is just a blue food dye that I had sitting in my closet. You can use some fancy artist dyes that you can get at the, at the paint shops, um, but food dye will work for you. And I do make one of these bases with this super blue because I really wanted to see how it looked. But off camera, I took a little bit of that and I mixed some more resin up and just poured a little bit in there to get some of the kind of not so dark bases. But once we have it all mixed up, we're gonna go ahead and pour it down the side of our dam. And you wanna go slow and just let the capillary action of the resin kind of fill in all the cracks and stuff. You can kind of go around the area of the rock just to get it everywhere that you want it to be, but do try to go really slow because again, we're trying to minimize the amount of bubbles that are going into this. And I like to make sure that all of my shells and the seaweed is completely covered because if I have a little bit of it sticking out, it's just not gonna look right. And this is what they should look like so far. Now, if you notice that there's gonna be a lot of bubbles around the ridges of these, and we're gonna go ahead and take care of those. I didn't quite follow my own advice and went a little too quick, and so we have a whole bunch of bubbles. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a grill lighter and just kind of blast them really quick on and off with the fire, and that's gonna pop all of those bubbles for us. And I do recommend using a grill lighter because if you use a torch lighter, it's it's gonna be really powerful and it might end up melting your base or scorching the rock. And if you use a regular one, you're gonna burn your hand. Then after that's all done, I just take a container or some type of protective thing and put it over the bases and let them sit for 24 hours because we don't want a bunch of dust getting into our hard work. And once you're all done with that, it's the next day, it's 24 hours later, and I'm just gonna take an X-Acto knife and some clipping tools, and I'm just gonna work all of this hot glue off and take off these dams. And here they are, they came out looking pretty awesome. And you know, I didn't think I was gonna like the really dark one, but I do think it looks pretty cool. You can definitely see more of the details from the sides of the shells and the grass and stuff like that when you go a little easier on the dye, but it's all personal taste, whatever you think looks best. And that's it. These are how the bases look when they're all done. Now, the only thing left to do is go in with an X-Acto knife and just kind of bevel the edges and clean up the sides a little bit because I do have a little bit of hot glue still on the bottom there. But they're really not that complicated. And I see people looking at resin stuff online and thinking, oh, I could never do that. That's, that's a sign of a true artist being able to work with resin. No, 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 none of that. Resin is very, very easy to use. And especially when we're just doing quick little water things like this, it, it doesn't really take a lot of effort. I got a couple more examples of the Deepkin army that I did before. Uh, like I said, I went a little bit lower on the amount of dye that I used in these, like very, very small amount. Uh, and I thought they came out looking pretty good, but I wanted to see it with a little bit more of the blue stuff in there. So that's it. I mean, if you guys have any questions, comments, uh, things that you'd like to see me make in the future, just let me know in the comments. I try to respond to every single one of them and stay tuned for more videos. I'm trying to get one or two out a week. And if you like what you saw here and you think somebody could benefit from seeing a tutorial on this, go ahead and share these videos. It helps me grow as a content creator here on YouTube. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm gonna have a lot more stuff coming real soon. Happy Wargaming, everyone.